In this video, I'm going to go through how to build up a confidence interval when sigma is unknown, and I'm going to use the t.inv call to get my t-score. <clears throat> okay, so um, I'm going to go through this one a bit quicker. I just uh, did a previous video with the t.inv.2t way of doing this, so that one goes through a bit more of how to build up confidence intervals in depth. Um, so in this one, we're just going to focus on the difference here of using t.inv instead of t.inv.2t. Okay, so let's get going here. Uh, in this example, we have these, um, these bolts here that we're going to sample. Again, um, there's been a big production run of them, and we want to do some quality control on them. And technically, these are uh, 5 8 inch shear bolts that we're doing quality control on. Um, so what we've done is we've sampled 400 of them. That's quite a large number. We want to be really sure that um, whatever sample we collect is quite accurate or a quite accurate representation of the population. Okay, so we sample 400 of them and we get the mean and the standard deviation. That gives us a degrees of freedom of 399 when we take 1 minus the sample size. Let's say we want to build up the 90% confidence interval. Um, that gives us an alpha of 1 minus 90%, so 1 minus E7. So that gives us a 10% area outside of the confidence interval. And if we want to use what's called the t.in formula to get the t-score, we actually need to take that area and divide it by 2. Let's have a look at why here. Okay, so when we're using the t.inv formula, uh, what we can do here, I'm just going to pause the video and pull up this graph. Okay, so here is the graph. Um, and again, using this t.inv, we have two possibilities. We can either put in the lower left tail area into t.inv. So that's just the alpha over 2. In our case, that turns out to be that 5% then. If there's 90% in the middle, 5% in the left tail here. So we can get that negative t-score if we want. We could also, it's a bit more work, but we could put in the area to the left of the um, of the higher limit here, of this higher positive t-score, that area would be the alpha over 2 plus the confidence level piece here. Uh, so in our case, that would be the 5% plus the 90%. We could put that in here as well to get the positive t-score value. So let's go have a look at that now. So two options. For a t-score, we could do a t.inv and just put in the 5%, which is in E9 here, so it's a bit hidden, and then put in the degrees of freedom. And that would give us a negative t-score, negative 1.687, or sorry, negative 1.6487. So that's great. We could also have actually put in that 5% plus the 90, so the 5% plus the 90, that would give us the positive t-score. That's another option. Okay, it's a bit more work though. So here's what I like to do. I like to grab the, in this case, the 5%, so the alpha over 2 value. For us, that's an E9. I like to put that in. And then I like to just put in a negative sign in front of the t-score to make it positive. Or I also could do an absolute value. ABS means absolute value. And that just gives me the positive version of that value. So it just drops the minus sign in front of the t-score. Beautiful. And then from there, go use that t-score which is an E10, times it by your sample standard deviation and divide by the square root of your sample size. 
to go get your margin of error. Beautiful. Okay, and once you've got your margin of error here, I just paused the video and added in these formulas. So here again is that formula for that margin of error. Um, once you've got that, you can go ahead and build up your lower and your upper limit for your confidence interval. So let's have a look at that next here. So now once we've got our standard or our margin of error, we just take and take our sample mean x bar minus our margin of error to get the lower limit. And take our sample mean and add our margin of error to get our upper limit. So those are our bounds for our confidence interval. And let's just add a couple more decimals here. There we go. Okay. Um, beautiful. So there is a 90% chance that the true average uh, bolt lake length is between 0.625 and 0.6253 inches. Okay, and that concludes this video. Thanks for watching.